too much iron. It could actually be deadly if you have too much iron in your blood. And it's hard to find out if you really do. In this video, I'm gonna show you all the causes, the signs, the symptoms, and what you can do to make sure you don't have this problem. Now we're gonna start right now. Well, hello everyone, I'm Dr. Glenn Harrison and welcome to this week's segment of Why. This is where we take just a few minutes to answer some of the most common health-related questions that I see in my office every day. So the question today is all about high iron. You know, I, I get this all the time. What are symptoms of high iron? Why do I have, why does my doctor tell me that I have too high of iron? Um, I've done videos before uh, on low iron, which is probably more common than high iron, at least in my clinic anyway. So I wanna shed some light on really what, what, are the, what are the causes of high iron and, and what can you do about it? it? And this is extremely important because if you have too high of iron, it can actually be deadly. Yes, if you have too high of iron, one of the first things that'll happen to your body over a period of time, like iron toxicity, you'll have liver failure, not just liver damage, but actually liver failure. And then after that, if it's going on, it'll lead to heart failure. So it, it is serious, it's very, very serious. And I've caught cases in my clinic where people already had liver injury, and I've caught people where they've had such significant liver injury, they, you know, they were looking for liver, don liver donors. It was that bad already. So it's important to have this conversation. So, so that's uh, some concerns of having high iron. Um, what are some symptoms of high iron? Well, this is kind of where it's sneaky because it's not obvious and people can go for a long time. If people have too high of iron, sometimes they can end up more lethargic. They can become a little more exhausted. Um, another symptom of it, and I learned this in clinic a few years ago, is it can create neurological disorders like bipolar disorders, really. I had a case that was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and all of his life, and lo and behold, when he came to my clinic, we found all a bunch of abnormalities, and he actually came in for other issues, and we started to work through it, and I saw, oh my goodness, your iron is off the charts. So we started to correct that, and uh, lo and behold, Decades after being di diagnosed with bipolar disorder, bipolar symptoms went away. So it is a big deal. So, so the symptoms aren't that common. You can, it really comes down to blood work. So you gotta, you, you gotta do the proper testing and I'll talk about that. So uh, that's kind of symptoms, whatever there is for symptoms of it, but the causes, it's always about the cause. So what are the causes? Well, there's three major causes of high iron. One is exposure. So people going crazy with iron supplementation. That can be one, it's not that common. Um, uh, environmental toxicity, this can be it. Like um, you can see it in, in certain environments and in industrial areas and not using proper breathing apparatuses, you can actually get iron overload and true iron, environmental iron toxicity. So that's one, not that common though in our, in our world in the West. The second one is also not that common, but it can be. If you have a, a disorder in your body, and there's many different disorders that like to destroy red blood cells, red, iron sits inside, it, you'll find iron in red blood cells. And if you have um, uh, disorders that destroy your red blood cells, you can spill iron in your body and your iron levels can come up. Uh, so that's a second one. The third one is, um, is genetic disorders, and I've had a few cases like this. And it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a genetic disorder that where people absorb more iron. So we all eat iron rich foods and we, when we eat it, people with this genetic disorder absorb 300 to 500% more iron than someone who doesn't. So they really absorb that iron and their levels go sky high. This genetic disorder is called hemochromatosis. Hem, hemochromatosis, that's really what it is and, uh, and it, it's got to be identified. So there's two ways to test for hemochromatosis. There's one, it's, uh, it's a blood test, and there's another one that's a saliva. I ordered both of those in my clinic. I still like the blood test for it, and, but that's a genetic disorder. And you can manage with a genetic disorder. You, you go to and, and donate blood or phlebotomy session, sessions where you get rid of this iron. Okay, so, so that's the third one. But there's actually a fourth one that's not really iron overload, but it kind of, kind of, it, it results in iron overload. 
if that makes sense. <laughs> it's um, inflammation. So there's three, well, four major lab tests to determine iron. And I've talked about this before on low iron symptoms. One is, is something called ferritin. Another one is TIBC, which is total iron binding capacity. There's another one called iron saturation. And then there's another one called serum iron or uh, total iron. Okay, so those are the four major tests to, to know your whole true iron story. And, and just one of these isn't enough. But ferritin specifically, it's, it's the best indicator of overall iron status in your body, but it lies to us. So if someone has really high ferritin, that could mean it's true high iron uh, due to hemochromatosis or a genetic disorder or, or what have you. But it can also, this ferritin number also artificially elevates due to acute inflammation. So if you're highly inflamed and you have this much ferritin, and you get inflamed, it'll bring it up. It can bring it up significantly in some people. And then it looks like you have high iron. I still treat it like it's high iron. I don't want to risk anything in organ systems. So, um, so acute inflammation can actually bring your iron levels higher and that should be managed. So if I see sky high iron, I ask two questions. Is this a genetic disorder? Is there something wrong with the blood? Like, is, are they destroying the red blood cells? And the third is, is it, is it, is it really not high iron in acute inflammation? So I've seen all sorts of things like this in my clinic. So what can you do if you're worried about it? You got to do those tests. That's it. There's nothing, there's no replacement for it. And if you do have high iron, there's a few things you can do. Get rid of your inflammation. <laughs> Look at everything in your body. We can help with that. You can reach out with us. That's what we do every day. Um, reduce the inflammatory processes in the body. That's number one. Another thing you can do if you have high iron in the body, stay away from vitamin C. Vitamin C aids in iron absorption. So you wanna stay away from vitamin C. If you can handle coffee and caffeinated anything, drink that, but be careful, don't affect your sleep patterns because the tannins in coffee reduce your iron levels. So that could be another thing that you can use with this. And then of course, reduce your high iron rich foods, especially heme iron, which is animal iron, if you will. Heme means blood. So there's two forms of iron. There's that in our diet, there's, there's heme iron, which is animal products. And then there's non-heme iron, which is uh, vegetarian or sources of iron. Heme iron really brings your iron levels up. Non-heme iron still brings your iron up, but not as much as animals. So pay attention to the consumption of your animal iron uh, food, uh, dietary uh, regimen, if you will. So hopefully this, this was helpful. Um, there's lots that can be done with high iron, but you know, um, be careful if you're doing any supplementation and just get tested. So we can help with that. You can reach out to us and I'll put the markers uh, below, below this video. So you can even reach out to your doctor and try to get them to order it all. That case that I told you about the, with the bipolar uh, issues and all of that, um, they didn't know the true picture of iron because not all the iron markers were tested for years, okay? There's nothing more important than testing so to find the causes of it. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. I look forward to talking to you next day where we're gonna answer the why to another health-related question. Have a great day.